What's up? What's going on? Uh, it's a podcast. I'm Artie Lang. Hey guys, it's James Flippin, the sound engineer for the Artie Quitter podcast. Uh, I'm sure my voice is the last thing you want to hear when you start the Artie Quitter podcast, but have to issue a bit of a mea culpa on the front end here. Uh, not my best day with the Artie Quitter podcast. We recorded a great segment to start out the show. There was much ripping on Dan for the Cubs. There was making fun of me for caring too much about the Mets. There was making fun of Gino for caring too much about the Chargers. And uh, Chris Cotton was just kind of there. So we lost that recording because I'm an idiot. I'm bad at what I do. All those things apply in this instance. Uh, definitely not one of my better days. We lost the recording. So we're going to pick it up here at a point where uh, I had left the mics open and still recording as I told Artie that we lost the first part of the recording. So again, my apologies to you, the listener. Today's episode would have started out with a lot more energy, a lot more, you know, enthusiasm. But uh, when you're recording something for the second time, never quite as good. So again, just want to say my bad. Try to do it better next time. Uh, we still do have a, a show here today that that's ready to go with Mitch Williams talking about the NLCS and the ALCS, some other polarity. But anyway, the Artie Quitter podcast without any further delay. Yeah, you know, Artie, I got bad news. What? That bar crashed out. We fucking lost that report. What court? That bar. What are you talking about? Where? In the in the machine. What are we losing? That recording. What recording? Of what? What we just did. The entire show. <laughs> I fucking love it. Cause all we can do, well, what are you, what are you gonna do? Well, I mean, there's nothing. It's not a, it's not a, you know. Well, it's it's not a, not a, it's 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 not a, Wait, boy, I, I, I explain that. Is it good or not? <laughs> no, save it for the podcast. Yeah, I see it. Okay, what happens? I mean, the, the SIM card, uh... Ba basically... Was, was full? Or yeah, was it... And, I and then you could have a backup in? Is, um, is we, that how you do it? We're supposed to use the thing that you guys take on the road as a backup. Right. Ever, ever since we set up, we were supposed to do it. We does, never did. Does Dan know this? Yeah. Oh, that's why he's downstairs. I think so. What's he doing downstairs? No, he has something that he had to do. I mean, he was, you know, he was mad, but I don't think that's why I went downstairs. Yeah, but he's never going to be up here right Well, let's start. All right. What about, okay, wait a minute, Mitch Williams. What, what, we have to call him a certain, I think, 3.30. Yeah. There you go. That's on Danny, though. Where the fuck is he? Final round down. Is he final rub down? Ready? Check, check, check. These are jitty, jitty people. <laughs> I'm watching the Departed Artie Quitter podcast. I'm watching the Departed. Chris Cotton's here. Gino Biscotti. Hey, 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 hey. What's up? Flippin's behind the dish. And Falato over in the kitchen. Now, listen. Uh, Dan, I hate to say this, but we do need the opening name again. <laughs> I'll explain again in a second. I was watching the Departed, you know, the, the movie about Boston. The uh, the Whitey Bulger thing before the Whitey Bulger movie, uh, Jack Nicholson's character in that uh, Departs based on Bulger. Mm -hmm. DiCaprio, Damon, they're all in the fucking thing. Martin Sheen, about Boston uh, gangsters. It, Scorsese won his best director for that. You know, and again, whatever. It's not Raging Bull, but you gotta give him for something. Good movie, solid movie. But uh, this is there's a part that just sticks with me. These two Italian guys from Providence come into rob a deli. <laughs> And DiCaprio's sitting there. And uh, the Indian guy's like, I, don't, I can't, listen, nobody comes in the store. I can't pay you. I pick a protect, but nobody comes in. And the guy's doing a <laughs> big Italian guy. He's doing the Boston accent. He goes, well, listen, you opened up a store in a Irish neighborhood. These are dirty, dirty people. <laughs> 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 Such a fuck, Jesus Christ. I mean, he really nailed that line. <laughs> you open up a sword and I these are jitty jitty people 
Do what you do. I don't know. Sell more food. Sell more. And he said, anything. I keep going, sell more, Akbar. My name is not Akbar. What are you doing? I don't know what the, I don't know what the fuck your name is. <laughs> but these Irish are dirty, dirty people. Dirty. That strong fucking Providence, Rhode Island slash Boston. Dirty. <laughs> We just caught Gino in Gino land. We just caught Gino hanging out in Gino Gino, land. Gino made the face and looked away, looked into the city. I love that Daddy movie. <laughs> I love that movie. Stop it. That was great. The movie? No, we were talking about him. We were talking about he was he no, was. No, it's just like very. Joke. It's just very like I look like I'm annoying you. I apologize. You're not annoying me. I thought that was very funny. No, but you're, I don't. I don't need it to be funny. I'm just saying. Like, you're, oh my god. Oh my even, god. I mean, it's disconcerting. Oh my god. Does Ed McMahon do that? He's dead. Does Andy Richter? He's Does Andy Richter, <laughs> When Conan O'Brien's doing a bit in the, in the beginning, whether it's good or not, Andy Richter's there for him. I'm not, he's there. I'm not your boy Twitchells. <laughs> well, no, you're Andy Richter at least? Not your boyfriend. Not your boyfriend uh, Twitchells with the... Are you at least Andy Richter? <laughs> I would love to be your Andy Richter. Well, you got to look at me every once And he can be your Amos and Andy. Oh, that just that was not terrible. That That's wasn't just... terrible. So, Flippin' gave it a grin. So here's the opening happy. poop. <laughs> uh, I, uh... If I, my heart doesn't seem into this opening, it's because I've done it already. I'll explain <laughs> why. That's, uh, we had spores and mold. Black mold, do you want to do the black show again? Or? Uh, yeah, what's up with the black mold? Yeah, what the hell? I don't, I don't remember it. Oh, I would think black mold is harmless. It just sits there and doesn't do anything. What? Waits for the white mold? Yes. Whereas the, the Mexican mold will steal your soul. Oh, you added that? Yeah, you know, I'm trying to, trying to one-up it. it. Makes no sense because there's no Mexican mold. No, there's Mexican mold. Mexican's not a I'm color. I'm not going to sit here. You look so annoyed at that face. And you would have Somebody said, happy. maybe the Mexican mole. <laughs> because that, that's a food reference. I, I, what, really? Right. Shocking. Shocking yeah. you made it about food. Listen, um, bro. I'm just excited that the Mets are, <laughs> are going to sweep in four games. <laughs> Artie's giving you your own energy back, yeah. and it's very weird. <laughs> I love it. I love that he hates it. <laughs> Unbelievable. So uh, they, we had to put a fucking, what is it called, Dan? A, a fucking. It's the uh, heap of 500. Heap of 500. <laughs> I, I you like know, the 400. You yelled that. You know, you yelled it. You didn't have it. <laughs> it's a heap of 800. Dan Falato. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of my air conditioning, I'm using that. That's getting rid of the spores in my fucking seven-figure apartment. <laughs> the whores can stay, yeah, so but the spores have to go. Yeah. Scores used to be a good thing. All right, well, that's it. So the, the, it's more of a heavy metal band than the uh, air conditioning. I just want to point out, again, okay, so th this is the second time we're doing the show because of a technical <laughs> issue. And I don't, listen, I'm not going to give anybody shit because I, you know, I, I'm a fuck up, but these guys aren't. So it, it, these guys are mad because it's a rare thing. When I fuck up, it's known, but no one is surprised, but uh, there's a lot of very tense energy in the room right now. Uh, well, I think we, there was a, so, but, but the, I have to point this out because as a comic, I, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't. Uh, the opening that we recorded that ended up not uh, being recorded, there was an entire discussion about how if Flippin and Dan and Gino are too into their sports teams to where it affects the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. And I said, maybe your job or something like that. So Dan, job. Dan, the the entire time, it doesn't affect my job. I do my job fine, and I, and I love the Cubs. It doesn't affect my job at all. I, I do it fine. Flippin said the same thing. You know, I'm a Mets fan, but I, you know, I got and Dan said, if Flippin goes to work, he does a fine job. I would like to hear you do a Flippin impersonation. So, so your the, Dan is so, spot on. So uh, the entire time, they're saying that one's the producer, one's the technician. The entire time they're saying they're not too into the their sports teams, and it doesn't affect their job. <laughs> on the show, I already got it. <laughs> I just got the it. show is not being recorded. <laughs> and, and the whole now, now I will laugh wholeheartedly. And, and, and it's hilarious because the whole first half of the show, I said almost nothing because I these mean, two know, were going at the it the entire time. They were Dan, Dan was adamant about it. Dan was like, "Listen, listen, Pally, you can insult anything you want, but not my work ethic." Sure, I'm upset. Sure, I'm out of it a little. Sure, the Cubs are down to nothing. It doesn't affect. Am I here? I'm doing my job. I'm doing my job as the producer of the show. Can I be being? And there was even a part. And again, you wouldn't ever hear this because it wasn't recorded. But 
there was even a part where Dan <laughs> where Dan said, "Can I be a better producer?" And I jokingly <laughs> said, "Oh, there's some things I haven't done." I jokingly said, <laughs> I, I, "I almost jokingly said, like like you know, recording the show." <laughs> Some things as a producer you should catch. <laughs> he was in, and then Flippin was not as adamant. He obviously, you know, Danny. I said, "Oh, Flippin does his job. He's a Met fan. He's here." It was worth you know, it. Uh, it was worth the hour of doing it just for that moment. Yeah, that was oh, hilarious. look at Flippin. He's like uh, the, uh, irony, you got me. the irony. The irony of it. The irony that 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 Dan and Flippin, the producer and the technician, claimed that they Doesn't are not affected it. by Doesn't the affect work. At all, the fact that while they were saying that, they were saying it on a show that was not being recorded. <laughs> That's fucking hysterical. <laughs> it's classic. Only here that could that hysterical. happen. That's classic. That is perfect. Only here. Doesn't could affect that. my job. <laughs> so hindsight being 2020, do you think <laughs> your love for your teams yeah. might might affect your work style I, a little I mean, bit? I'm here doing my show. <laughs> I'm sure I woke up a little sad. <laughs> a little out of it. <laughs> Dan, your thoughts. <laughs> We'll go to Flippin afterwards. <laughs> I think Flippin should talk first. This is up to zero. I will point this out. In, fa- in fairness to yes. the guys. Yes. They are upset yeah. because it is very rare that Flippin makes a mistake. No. Very rare. I mean, he's... James Flippin is a guy that... You know, he's the closest... I'm going to give him a big compliment. He's the closest guy to Fred Norris I've seen that in that in that sort of genre of, you know... Uh, Te- record, you know, doing the technical shit. The dumps with the voices. The dumps, great. the voices, and uh, he's also a creative guy, funny, good sense of humor. Never looks out the window sad on his whole that, you know, This isn't about me. He at least fake laugh, fake laugh a little bit because that's what you do. <laughs> I love what but he, he, you know, it's a good atmosphere, good sense of humor. Filato is, of course, Dan Filato, legendary. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Legendary guy. The, the three letters WGN mean anything to you people? No, of course not. <laughs> Uh, but uh, you know, so it is. It's it's very very rare. But the fact that the comedy god shined down <laughs> and let us have a discussion about their work ethic because the Cubs and Mets are playing each other, and literally people forty eight minutes of nothing, <laughs> wasted time. <laughs> <laughs> now for that three for that five ten minute rant you just did that was brilliant. I mean, you know, my God. <laughs> okay, flip it, it, go ahead. Flip it, the floor is yours. Uh, um, first of all, I I appreciate you being so understanding about everybody. <laughs> I know everybody. You're gonna, no, there's uh, nothing to do. I mean, Dan. First of all, it's not the first time with Dan. There was an amazing interview with Michael Strahan and the mayor of North, Cory Booker. Corey Booker. We went, we, oh my God, that could have ended his career. It was so f- no. Well, he would you know. My career, maybe. No, his. It should have been to Dan's career. <laughs> we, we go for a portable thing, the direct TV show, the Nick and, we're still Nick and Artie show, that early. We go to a golf tournament. We Strahan and, and fucking Cory Booker. I'm asking questions about Eddie Murphy's wife. and he's, But, you know, Strahan is very, like, sense of humor, but getting mad. 15 minutes of sheer bliss. We get back to the studio that night, and uh, Dan's like, we don't have the show. I broke, I, I broke the machine. <laughs> I guess the machine. But, uh, we had just bought the most. Uh, Directv had just bought us like state of the art, like dat machine. It looked like something from the future. <laughs> and the first interview, it didn't record. <laughs> I'll let Dan get into that. But flip again. I'm sorry. I wanted to give Dan no, history. I don't um, remember you making a mistake. Dan, uh, several. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this has happened to me before with podcasts. It's one of the shittiest feelings ever because you know it's gone. It's not like it's Joe Mattery saying, "Oh, please cut that out." We still have it. <laughs> Which we, I'm saying we have all the stuff that he told us to cut out. We just didn't release if, it. If, 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 if the comedy gods were really doing their job, today's episode of Fixing Joe would have not been. Released. <laughs> that's, that's fair. Um, Every yeah, somehow, Joe's his own producer, his own technician, and Fixing Joe always gets recorded. <laughs> Go ahead. But yeah, no, it's just it's it's terrible. And I know you're upset. I hear you. Don't worry. Listen, there's nothing. To, it wasn't really a gem of a, except for the fact that we get to. I wish I do wish I had the tape of you guys saying if two minutes of it existed, the two minutes of you guys saying I do my job and it doesn't get affected. Listen, bro, I watch the Cubs, I love the Mets. Nothing stops me oh, yeah. from doing what I got to do. Right, I take care of my business. <laughs> No, I mean, but I, I, Chris I is making up. them both black for some reason. Yeah, it sounded very black the way they was coming at you. I stuck oh, yeah. up for Dan. I said, you know, he's still here. He's still <laughs> his job. Dan's here. He's doing his job. Well, I think I think I said a- we're getting the podcast on tape. Ah! It's 
going well. <laughs> and on time. He also said on time. Yeah. You did, Dan. I always get it out I on time. I always make sure it's out on time. That's literally what you said. It's there's out no on chance. time. Like, like, listen, all right, there's no chance like we're not recording this. <laughs> I, I think it's a testament to how professional you two are because you were both upset. And as we all walk back from break, like, he walked in and he tells me, I'm like, oh, that happens. And Chris goes, okay. And Artie just laughs. It's like, <laughs> we're all like, whatever. And you guys well, are like, yeah. motherfucker. Because <laughs> well, you, you guys have no stake in the game. I don't care. <laughs> what are you going to do? I, it's I, still I tried done. to go down the King's supermarket to, to head you off. To, to Why? Lock you up, huh? You think I'd be upset? Huh? Well, it was there was some funny stuff in there. It was gold. I it was it, it was it was broadcasting shit. museum of history shit what that you said. What was funny in there? Yeah, what was real funny? I don't remember anything. Uh, I, I tried to make a couple notes so that we could get back into it. Ha, ha. Uh, <laughs> what did we get into? Uh, Gino, Gino, uh, Gino uh, and, and Twitchells. Something about Gino and Twitchells. I said oh. Twitchells doesn't really have Tourette's. He has it like uh, Stuttering John has a stutter. That's right. what I said. That's right. Yeah, well, that's you, they're cured said. whenever they have to do their plugs. Whenever yeah, the plugs Gino, come out. Having... Gino record the, re, re, that story Gino uh, recounted where he, uh, he does all those quotes. At the comedy club. Oh, that no, was well, we good. said Mike and Stacy were a train wreck. Oh, yeah, yeah, when you were quoting yourself, that yeah. was good. Yeah, that was probably great. Gino if told I'm me. Gino <laughs> told a story just so he could quote himself. That's not true. But that's oh, you mentioned him hosting. Yeah, yeah. Hosting. No, there's not this Rick Kim. You know, okay, we could get to it. And then the loyal, <laughs> loyalty to the Chargers. Yeah. The first, the first thing I did bring up though, I, I wanted to make sure I brought up after the theme song, was the fact that you guys are extra into your teams. I wanted to bring mm-hmm. that up because Dan is very uh, affected. By the Cubs, I can tell he walks around with a very, very scary look on his face, like you want to call somebody. And uh, I say, I have a friend here who needs counseling, and doesn't go out. And, and then he claims he wants to go out to bars. I don't. I mean, I've never seen you be social like that at bars. You want to go out with Hoboken Cub fans who are like Oof. 22 years old? There's uh, okay. Right in this building, I've seen two Cub hats. I, there's a there's a skinny black guy that wears a Cubs hat. Yeah, but they but they wear hats. And black Ooh, people no. just wear hats. Like, like, like I think the color. They're Cub fans, but there are whole there are Cubs bars. No, right. I mean, back me up on this, Chris. It depends, Young, on, it depends on how guys. dirty the hat is. If the hat is dirty, these are dirty, dirty hats. <laughs> no, black it's guys wear socks hats because they're street thugs. No, no, that's what I'm saying. It, no, whoa, first, first, of all, first of all, they're street thugs. How the fuck is that? <laughs> how skinny is it that you didn't call them athletic? Most skinny black guys are athletic. No, if it's a, if it's a Why fitted hat, you can go either way. The White Sox are street thugs. Were you trying to be funny? <laughs> yes. My God, what a that fell short. <laughs> no, but if it's a if it's a fitted hat that's nice and clean, it's, it's for it's for show. If it's a, if it's if it's a dingy hat and it doesn't look good, it's stolen. It's it's yeah. you piece of shit. <laughs> no, uh, it's he's a fan. He's a fan. These are dirty, dirty people. <laughs> but the reason the bar came up was that I said because Artie, you were saying that basically baseball players don't give a shit. They're just going to get on their private well, yeah, exactly. jet. Exactly. I'm saying, money. Well, nowadays, the Dominican guy's making forty mil a year. What the fuck do they care about the Cubs? They didn't grow up on fucking Rush Street. But I think it's Dan is more about you know his fellow fans and the connection he has to them. That's why I was saying he'd probably be out at a bar okay. celebrating okay. if they won than say. And- you know, Which hanging out. My with argument Rizzo is, my something. argument is, Dan is now fifty three or fifty four, one of the two. Uh, by the way, that, that are you you're lying about your age? No, because <laughs> fifty four. Because I'm <laughs> telling you, we, we, the, when we met, it was October the third, the night we might have met, or the night we started the Nick and Artie show. It was your birthday. It was October third, yes. two thousand eleven. You, I, I'm telling you, Dan, you told me several times that that was your fiftieth birthday. No. Why did you say that? I don't remember saying that to you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You did. I mean, you said, <laughs> I said was that your 50th was birthday? That we, you said, yeah. That you, we were going to go to dinner at Da Silvano for my 50th birthday well, the next year. Are you, oh, no, I, no, I mean, I just remember, I remember you saying it was your 50th, the, no. the one we met. All right, whatever. So it's a year off. So you're going to go, you're telling me if the Cubs won, you're going to find the Hoboken Cub Bar. And go with 22-year-old yuppie Hoboken Cub fans. <laughs> what are you going to do? I don't want to do that. What are you going to do? I don't know. Uh, when you're around people, I, like, I know that I'm interested. You, you sit in the corner with your backpack. <laughs> <laughs> you have a backpack? And sometimes people go, is Dan all right? I go, I don't know. He just looks like he's waiting for a train to outwitch. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to go, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, Grandpa. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> Can I get... How I is, meant like a Chicago bar. What year is the Barello? <laughs> <laughs> what Chicago bar? <laughs> what year is the Barello? <laughs> what sh- what sh- do you got? That's a wine. Do you have a bar in Chicago? You wouldn't have to fucking look on the internet for a bar in Chicago. Oh though. no! Are so you where would you? Where There's do you go? Fifty bars by my house. You go to the Harry Lodge. Carey's? Is Harry Carey's? I place? would probably go to the Lodge, to Harry Carey's or Stanley's, one of those two. Okay. And I wouldn't have to worry about a seat. I could, you know, all, why I, do they, is, why they, all I gotta do is call Dutchie. So you got that kind of fucking clout. Yes. 
Hey! Dan Falato's coming. <laughs> He's coming. Get a shot there, I'll touch it. I know I'm not there. I wish I was there, but get that a seat. God damn it, this guy won. He's watching the Cubbies win. And there's one thing Daddy likes. It's a good bar. Right? <laughs> and it doesn't affect his work. Not at all. <laughs> I remember the last time the Cubs lost. Uh, four innings of an entire game were not on the air. <laughs> <laughs> and I just kept going. Steve Stone wanted me to stop broadcasting. I said, Steve, I don't care. This is what I do. Broadcasting. So I just broadcasted to Steve, the engineer, who looked quite puzzled. <laughs> and a young John Cusack, who was going to sing, uh, uh, take me out to the ball game. And I had just saw uh, him uh, in a movie called uh, Say, Say Something. <laughs> and uh, I, quite frankly, I didn't get it. He brings a radio to some broad's house at the end like a pussy playing some of that rock music I didn't get. But Dad loved it. <laughs> but Dad loves Notting Fucking Hill. <laughs> little Light in the Loafers, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> little Light in the you Loafers. You just mixed your Harry Carey and Euchre. Yeah, you, you lapsed in the uh, Euchre at the end. <laughs> yeah, I, sometimes I lapse in the Euchre. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I lapse into a coma. <laughs> So you laugh, you, you, you know what? You laughed it to a Lamar. Here's the thing. Yeah. Too soon. Here's the thing. I remember one time, Dad, uh, Dad was preoccupied with something. He had just seen Notting Hill. And uh, two of the 1984 playoff games had no sound. <laughs> Boy, I, I'll tell you what. As a broadcaster, that was a very disconcerting. Because I need sound. That's if, how I make my living. If there is a God, the next four games will go to the Cubs. And flipping, we'll have to sit through the entire winter. If there's a God. All he kept saying was lock it up. Cubs and uh, Mets in four. That's what he said on the lost footage. I don't know why. Why would you say that, dude? That's like. Uh, that's absolutely. <laughs> that's like a jinx. He's like, mark my words. It's the next four. I'll tell you what. If the next four games go to the Cubs, Slippin's going to absolutely flip out. Said that opening footage was about as necessary as Game way, 5. I, I, I no, one a, of the microphones will blow up. <laughs> I got a, tw a text while I ran downstairs to, ch to catch Artie. If you're near Atlanta, go see Joe Matarese. <laughs> October 22nd. Who the hell is that? At the Laughing Skull in Atlanta. Yeah. Kid sounds like he's really making it. <laughs> <laughs> laughing Skull. I can remember 30 years ago when we just arrived. Joe and I got to New York at the same time. <laughs> and uh, they said, let's go back to the future. Close your eyes. 30 years from now, if it all works out, You'll be a heroin addict during a show in your kitchen. <laughs> I'll be at the Laughing Head. Skull. In Atlanta. Skull, stop, stop. Skull, Harry. Excuse me. The Laughing Skull. <laughs> Sounds like a queer joint. <laughs> Everything like those, guys, like those guys that generation anything's not Tony's bar is a queer joy. <laughs> laughing skull what are you trying to get creative like you old fucking Brenner there's something a little hoo-ha about a kid that yeah. <laughs> who are you Charles Lawton there's something like, <laughs> okay Liberace the laughing <laughs> skull <laughs> calm down Liberace I don't have yeah. <laughs> okay <laughs> Laughing Skull, Joe Batteries. Good luck out there, buddy. Oh, I know. I'm that's, funny. That's, that's, <laughs> that wasn't me. Wait a minute. So now, wait a minute. You have to tweet his gig now? Yeah. Oh, no, you're not doing it. That's I'm what he, he said. He told he Dan, asked you. you can't even get you the You haven't fucking... retweeted my football picks. Uh, Thank God for what you didn't last we, we week. We were doing that, too. But no, you like, haven't. You, well, were you don't have to. Well, you guys are. I'm just putting a... Dan, it's not Dan's job. He can't even record the show with this schedule. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Cubs are affecting his retweeting my football. Picks. You know what? I'll tell you what. You know what Which people? Were terrible you know what week. people who aren't obsessed? I'll give you producers and tech guys who aren't obsessed with their teams. This is what they do. They get it. They get the door. They go. Okay. Okay. Flip. I'm going over the pre-show checklist. <laughs> SIM card. Check. <laughs> Recording. Check. Uh, Chris Cotton chair reinforced. Check. <laughs> Extra bread. Check. <laughs> Artie's notes about everything going on in the world. Check. <laughs> Every story related to Chicago on the planet Earth, check. Uh, my, uh, yes, is my jumpsuit ready? Check. Go to the cleaners and get that, uh, the, the jogging suit I've been wearing since 1984, check. Flippin', uh, yes, uh, uh, okay, the entire banter. Talking points for Gino, check. How to deflect from Gino's picks, check. Daddy, 
Dad. It would be great if only Gino wasn't recording. That would be fantastic. How to deflect from Gino's picks. You always take this side. Yeah, it would be good. Funny. Right. Funny. And also 10 years of married... Uh, episode number 242 of Fixing Joe is now available. What? Yeah. Ten, year, what ten years of married? Ten years of married. He's That's married? Right. Yeah. He's got, wait, wait, wait. What, what does that mean? Does that, he's he been married ten, for ten it's years. It's just ten years married? It means ten years of it's marriage, says, but it probably autocorrected. I was going to say, it just says ten years married? Yes. <laughs> ten years of married? Ten years married. Oh, okay, ten years. I thought you said of married. Half of marriage. I won't ask you to cut this out. Episode 242 of Fixing Joe is now up and able, you're able to listen. Hey guys, big showbiz news. I'm gonna hate having to re record this one too. 242? 242 of Fixing Joe? 242? It doubles the amount of Friends episode. <laughs> it's gonna sound gay. <laughs> Back to the checklist. Reminder. The iPhone alarm goes off if you're about to say the N-word in front of Chris. <laughs> yes, check. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. That's the checklist. That's good stuff. It's good stuff. Mm. Good stuff. All right. Well, on that checklist is called Mitch Williams, so why don't we... Check. <laughs> call my good friends, Mitch Williams. Mitch Williams, of course, knows me. Can we ask him if he knows my cousin Franklin? Mm. <laughs> he doesn't know Dan. He doesn't even know cousin Franklin. These are jitty, jitty people. <laughs> Dan, have you had a discussion about uh, knowing you today? Or does he know you? <laughs> Dan, don't, don't play into his, his meanness. Was anyone not here for that? Chris, were you here I was here for the Mitch. Okay, Williams. yeah, the Mitch. He, you know, Dan said they were good friends and lived together. We said, Mitch, uh, Dan Filati goes, who? <laughs> was a long, I didn't say There was a long together. pause, and he went, who? Hello, who? I go, do you not know Dan Filati? He's like, no. What? Yeah, who, 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 what? And it was very awkward. And then Dan, Dan sat down and started to sweat. He got those uh, Brian Williams, uh, what's the name of that <laughs> comedian? Just like, Steve ran on his east, right? And uh, then he turned mean. He turned bad. He got mad at Mitch Williams. He goes, that's him. He's not even an all-star. <laughs> <laughs> Who gives a shit about him? Uh. He's an asshole. <laughs> I can tell you we didn't <laughs> rub it in Canton. That's what we didn't rub right. it. Are we ready? Mitch. Mitch. Mayday, mayday. Uh-oh. Some, <laughs> someone's too obsessed with the Mitch. Yeah, I'm here, buddy. Hey, what are you? What are you laughing at? <laughs> you. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought you were uh, listening to Fixing Joe. <laughs> uh, what? Uh, would you, did, have you talked to Dan? Dan was very hurt, Mitch, that you didn't know who he was. Do you know who he is now, Dan Filato? Uh. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> he claims you lived with him and uh, Mark Grace for like a while. Oh, I've got a really good memory. It's just very short. <laughs> I wonder what causes that. Um, so, uh, no, we, we love you, of course. What Dan did, uh, we don't want to say this because you're, you're not a listener or a subscriber like the rest of the country. But Dan, uh, <laughs> and apparently today, even the subscribers couldn't hear it. Almost. <laughs> Perfect. Even if you were a subscriber, you weren't going to hear today's show. Perfect. Uh, but uh, uh, but uh, he, he got mad. He goes, fuck him <laughs> for not knowing me. <laughs> like over there, the sweat is pouring down Dan's face. He looks like, you know, everything's falling apart in his life. Rosebud, the sled is being burned. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Mitch, so anyway, Dan was hurt, but we'll move on. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch, very, very upset. Okay, so uh, let's talk a little baseball. Um, the Mets, Cubs. Do the Cubs have a shot? Do they almost have to? I mean, they have to sweep in Chicago, right? They're not going to come back and, and win two against the Mets. Look, I have a, a, a fondness for the Cubs. I played there for two years. It's a great place to play. They have, in my opinion, zero chance of winning this series. <laughs> Were there any other people besides Dan that you forgot in Chicago? <laughs> it's not got nothing to do with baseball. Anybody well, else? I'm like, if I threw out a name, would you? I'm great with faces. I'm terrible with names. <laughs> if I showed you a picture of four people, would you be able to pick out Dan Filato? Probably. I, if I showed you Dan Filato, Brian McRae, 
Uh, as long as the other three Leon. people in the picture were women, I could pick ah! I, I don't know. I don't know about that. How about John Crook's hair? <laughs> Leon Dorham, Andre Dawson, and one of these is Dan Falato. <laughs> Mitch, did you ever see John Crook take a shit with a shirt off? No. <laughs> oh, he no. did. He did. I don't, I don't even want to have to address that. Uh, But you did. I could tell my uh, ass. Okay. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, all right, we'll, we'll move on from that. <laughs> Did John Crook ever show up on a Sunday afternoon game with uh, sticky shit in his hair that could have been cum? Crookie never left the ballpark after Saturday night game. <laughs> <laughs> Was he the kind of guy who'd start drinking beers and just fall asleep in the clubhouse? Did. Uh, did I ever see a guy drinking beers and fall asleep in the clubhouse? No, Crook. Was he the kind of guy who would do that and stay there for like a night or two? Well, when I was playing with Crookie in 93, yeah. he actually hated his first wife, so he would look for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what percentage of the major league players would you say didn't hate their first wife? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're counting me and Crookie, it's 100%. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure well, for Babe Ruth is on that list, too. Um, well, listen, I don't know. You're right. The Cubs are just... Uh, they're, they're, there's no bats. Well, Horrible last offense. Night, last night, all the pressure was heaped on uh, Arietta. And I'll be honest, I was tweeting about this last night. He yeah. didn't even... In his last 13 starts, 12 in the regular season, and then counting the, the Pirates start. He had thrown 96 in the third inning and given up four earned runs. Wow. Wow. Man. Yeah, that's incredible, huh? Yeah. Then you count last night and the start before, and he had given up eight. And that, I looked at it, his arm speed was not there. To me, he looked like he was just going through a dead arm at the absolute worst time he could possibly go through a dead arm. Yeah, well, listen, uh, for that to happen in those circumstances in the playoffs, you got to be clutch. You know, it's just, uh, you got to bring it, especially in a market like Chicago. Uh, what, what Compare Philly fans to, like, around the league. Like, you know, you think Cub fans are on the level of Philadelphia fans as far as being, I don't know, they can get mean? No, no, no. I mean, Cub fans, I played there in 89, I played there in 90. Yeah, Cub, Cub fans show up. In '89, we got into first place, and they sold 6,500 standing room only tickets. Yeah, from from May 27th to the end of the year. Right. Wow. Jesus but Christ. In, in, in 1990, we stunk, and they still come. I yeah. mean, a Cub fan. I mean, it's more of a social type deal. Yeah. No, I, I've been to Cub games when they're not good, and it is so much pussy there. First of all. <laughs> I mean, dude, let's not just, just in the lineup. No, there is. I mean, I, I saw, never, I saw a hot chick blowing the Ernie Banks statue. <laughs> I never noticed any of that stuff. Artie. No, I saw. You know what? Stop. I saw a hot chick blowing the Ernie Banks statue, and uh, and right in the middle of it, the statue said, uh, "Go for. Let's do this twice. Let's blow two. <laughs> Ernie was talking about a double header. <laughs> a double header. That was perfect. <laughs> well played. But, and while there was a white chick blowing the Ernie Banks statue, and the statue of Hack Wilson was mad. <laughs> <laughs> Artie, you're going to get a bad reputation, I'm telling you. <laughs> I already have it, dude. I got the. I came into this with a bad reputation. I, I mean, again, the game has changed, of course. Uh, a lot of interracial dating. Your thoughts? <laughs> Pardon me? Your thoughts, on, <laughs> your thoughts on interracial dating. Just pretend we're on the tractor on ecstasy. <laughs> mowing the mowing your back lawn there. Just me and you with a couple of buds and a couple of beer cozies. It's cool. Say what you want. I'm black, so it's good. Yeah. I'm clearing you. You can say whatever you want. No, but I'm saying, but when, when a really dark-skinned black man kisses a blonde white girl, it's startling. I mean, Kim, like Kim Batiste. Wouldn't you say it's startling? I mean, it doesn't mean you're racist, but you whoa, that's startling. <laughs> No, it's not startling. Okay. Okay, listen, good answer. Except to God. <laughs> no, no. Jesus Christ, Gino, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, right here. No. You can say what you want. I don't say Jesus I hate it. I don't say I hate anybody. You know, unless, of course, <laughs> I'm related to the girl. But I, if I, God can only see the people with souls. Don't what worry. I'm, what I'm saying is, as I just, it's like, whoa, it's like seeing a car accident. Yeah. <laughs> 
We'll move on. The um. <laughs> Have people seen you in a speedo, Artie? <laughs> I, you know what? I think a father, a white father, seeing me make out with a, her, his daughter in a speedo is just as startling. That's a good point. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess, you know, it would be nice if the Cubs did have it. You know, you could get in your head. They did have a chance. And uh, no matter what, you're right. They're going to show up. Uh, but, um, look, I, the, the Philly fans are mean. But what they did to Bartman, what, what those Cub fans did to Bartman, man, a different side of them came out that night. That was like, whoa. They well, there's were, no, no question about that. I yeah. think the difference between Philly fans and Cub fans I love the Philly fans because they're honest. If you go out and mm -hmm. suck, they're the first ones to tell you. Right. Trust me, I got booed on a pitch-to-pitch -pitch basis when I played in Philadelphia. <laughs> well, that's what happens, yeah. yeah. That's great. And, but that's what I like. I like honesty. And the Cub fans, I'll be honest, opening day, the first game I ever pitched in a Cubs uniform, I came in for Sutcliffe in the eighth, got out of the eighth, we're leading 5-4, Went back out to pitch a ninth, and the first three guys get broken bat singles. <laughs> and this, this is my first day in the National League after coming from the American League. And I had just watched the special before the game on Mike Schmidt and his 51 career home runs in Wrigley. Right. <laughs> and I'm standing there with bases loaded, and I swear to God, I go, oh, Schmitty. This guy's got 51 career homers here. And that's who's at the plate. Man. Well, I end up coming back. I struck out the side and got out of it. We won 5-4. But the Cubs fans were booing me opening day until I came back and struck out the side. And then from then on, I could basically walk on water in that city. Mitch, are you aware that uh, the effect on your phone is the same effect that Joe Walsh uses on his microphone during Rocky Mountain Way? <laughs> You're going you know, I'm out of nowhere. You just I, go glow and I, I I could I didn't hear the first part of what you said. No, I'm saying you get you you're the voice. Uh, your voice gets. Are you on a cell phone? No, I'm on a telegraph. Yeah, I'm on a cell phone. <laughs> All right, well, it goes in and out. Don't blame me. These are jitty jitty people. <laughs> Uh, you your know, cell phone's like your strike zone, kind of all over the place, buddy. There you go. That was Gino Biscotti. <laughs> He'll be at the laughing hut. And... <laughs> He'll be at the crying hut in fucking Bismarck, North Dakota. He hit me. He's a professional. Now, the Cubs, what they did to Bartman was very, I mean, that was like a, yeah, a turnaround there, but I think the Philly fans would have actually beheaded him. The Philly fans yeah. are like, I would have made it out of there. Yeah, they're really they're very, very disturbing. Um, now, Rick, you mentioned Rick Sutcliffe. Uh, is Reggie Jackson was on, and he told me that he once met Rick Sutcliffe's wife, and she was by far the the worst looking woman he'd ever seen her with. <laughs> I I can't I can't comment on that. <laughs> well, you didn't deny it. <laughs> These are dirty, dirty people. <laughs> I can honestly say I don't know what Sutcliffe's wife looks like. Okay. John <laughs> Cook. Good <laughs> answer. <laughs> Taking a shit. <laughs> we'll cut this out. <laughs> Oh, it's not even being recorded. What are you worried about? <laughs> we got Freddie just Freddie DeCordova over here. <laughs> Freddie non DeCordova, non Recordova. Uh, Mitch, what do you do? What What is your day? Uh, have you ever seen Mariana Rivera's wife? No, I have not. Did you ever see El Chapo, the guy who broke out of the prison in Mexico? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have not. Uh, okay. Well, then you've, you've never seen. Uh, the only live TV I watch is uh, baseball games. <laughs> well, he broke out of prison live, pretty much. <laughs> I never saw more. I mean, this guy El Chapo. I, I mean, talk about. I love how the people on the news go. They're investigating. People in the prison might have been in on it. <laughs> really? He got. He he was in a den watching Sports Center, and then he got like a call on a phone and just walked over to the corner of the room, <laughs> casually put a, a cashmere sweater on, and went down a hole. We haven't seen him since. <laughs> you think the prison, people in the prison might have been in on it. <laughs> he, he got on a You're way more up to date on current affairs than I am. Well, he got, he got on a waiting motorcycle. He drove two miles out of the prison to a helicopter, and pretty much we haven't seen him since. Well, that's a pretty good plan, I reckon. Well, we're, the, well the rumor is that he's uh, actually uh, switched lives with Mariana Rivera's wife. <laughs> 
And Rivera, well, has, I, Rivera hasn't missed it. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the weird part is, that the more awkward part is, Rivera's wife is having a hard time running the cartel. <laughs> <laughs> you are you are just wrong in so many ways, buddy. Listen, I, I I guess my pre-interview is wrong here. I have all the notes. Are you willing to talk about all this? <laughs> now we get to the hard questions. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? How do you think the language barrier in the major leagues is going to affect you? I mean, eventually, every manager is going to have to speak Spanish. Right, I mean, for the for them to survive, Japanese for the pitchers. Well, it's Japanese. There's a bunch of different, all these different uh, ethnicities are running the America's pastime. Well, there's no question. I, I mean, it's good for the game. It is and when you when you yeah, it is. I mean, because we're getting some extremely talented players that come from other continents, other countries, all that. Right. It's great. It's great for the game because I think we're getting the best of the players in the world. Right. So when it becomes a World Series, it's actually a World Series. Yeah. Well, I, I I managed in the minor leagues, and I had a Japanese pitcher that pitched for me, and I'm a hillbilly. Everybody knows that. And yeah. he told me what his name was, and I told him, first day, your name is Bob. <laughs> <laughs> and Sayonara. Everybody, everybody on the team called him Bob, and he laughed about it. And he actually did really well for me. So I, I, I have a different way of dealing with situations like that. Well, oh, that's great. No, I mean, so you deal with them by uh, outright racism. That's right. <laughs> it works. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, Pocahontas. Hey, Pocahontas, your name's Bob now. <laughs> hey, uh, Hashiro. Guess what? It's racism if it offends the person you're speaking with. <laughs> well, it didn't offend him? No, not at all. He knew I was kidding. He's probably and he knew I couldn't speak Japanese. I have hard enough trouble with English. <laughs> <laughs> Japanese is a very difficult language to learn, right? Uh, it is, but uh, they, they listen, they're great players. That Suzuki guy on uh, Ichiro on the end. Yeah, he was pretty good. Oh, my God, seeing him p play live. He's halfway down the fucking uh, first baseline, you know, as he's swinging the bat. What about well, the... And that's the, the scary part is, is he had unbelievable power when he needed it. Right. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, now, what about the American League? Blue Jays and uh, Royals. What do you think is going to happen there? Uh, the the Jays were able to come back from 2-0 in the division series. I don't think there's any chance they can possibly come back in this series because they don't have the starting pitching and the bullpens, that Kansas City bullpen is no joke. You're right, man. They, got, so I mean, listen, they, they, they won't hesitate to go to it. Yeah, and they lost. Uh, the Jays lost Cecil, their best lefty out of the pen. But it, it's 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 they're unpredictable with that. It's Gino, by the way, first time, long time, Mitch, absolute <laughs> pleasure. Uh, it, it, but their offense, it, it, they're like a slow pitch softball team. So you don't think anything could happen if anyone's going to take out that KC bullpen? It could be Toronto. I'm not saying you're wrong. They're definitely in dire straits, and it goes back to Toronto now for tonight's game. But I'm just you don't think that 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 offense can just explode at any moment and just turn the series around? That's Gino cut through the bullshit, Piscotti. <laughs> well, every anything is possible. And I was up in Toronto. Except during the first part of the show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was in Toronto last week doing some TV stuff, and yeah. I made the notion that, to, and I said, everyone's going to think I'm crazy. But as soon as Cecil got hurt, right. for me, David Price would have been moved to the bullpen, and I would have activated Burley onto the postseason roster. Yeah, why isn't Burley on the roster? Was he doing that poorly in the second half? Because he's a Burley, Burley person. <laughs> Look, he, he throws not. You got all those left handed hitters with Kansas City. Right. Add Price to the bullpen. Then if Burley gets through five innings, you can go to a left hander. And ha there's no way Kansas City is going to lose to that Toronto team if they get to the back end of that bullpen and they don't have a left hander to get Hosmer, Gordon, Mustakis one of these guys out in a key situation and if I'm bringing uh, if, I, if I start Burley and I bring Price in and tell David Price they're only renting him anyway 
there's no way they're going to be able to afford to sign him at the end of this year. He's a free agent. Yeah. So whip him like a rented mule. Put him out there every night. Yeah, in the series rather than just let him affect a game or two. And that's what they I did. Think it would have been a lot more effective. That's what they did in Game Four, the end of the ALDS. It looked like you were right on the money with that, right? Because they brought him in in Game Four to relieve what's his name, the uh, knuckleballer, Dicky. Yeah, all right, Dicky. I think that the message was sent that night. In my opinion, and I said this up in Toronto, that Gibbons made that move. So he didn't have to consider starting Price in Game Five. Yeah, he wanted he wanted Stroman to start Game Game Five. So the only way he can do that and justify it to Price is to throw Price two days prior to that and use him fifty pitches to where there's no argument. Yeah, well, that, I, I, that, I, that's my take. I also thought maybe, and, and what you're saying makes a lot more sense. But I was thinking, you know, maybe this is a guy that's 0 six now, 0 and seven in the postseason as a starter. I thought maybe it's like, look, maybe Gibbons like, look, let's just bring him in, big fat lead, get his feet wet, you know, just to have him pitch in the postseason in no pressure situation, and that's kind of what he did. And it looked like it worked in game, you know, what was it, game two, and, yeah, until he, he fell apart in that up. last inning. You're listening to Mike and Mike, by the way. <laughs> He still, gave up, he still gave up runs. I mean, R.A. threw the ball better than Price did. Yeah. In, in the, you're talking about the ALDS. I agree, but I thought he was... Yeah. What you're saying definitely makes more sense. He puts him in, takes him out of the equation, and he goes to the guy who was at Stroman that was supposed to be the starter on opening day before he tore the ACL or whatever. Yeah. Would you exactly. Have... Stroman gives him a chance to win in, in game three. He you really have... does. Would you rather your daughter date Dave Winfield or Ichiro Suzuki? Uh, neither one. They're both too old. <laughs> I know you're thinking about Winfield's Excellent. package, Excellent. but you said Suzuki could be a pretty big hitter when he wants to be. Absolutely. You're, you're, you're not going to bait me into something <laughs> stupid, Artie. All right. All right. Uh, now, uh, I just, uh, I was, you know, I'm getting these questions from your blog. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nothing's impossible except hearing the yeah, first half the, of the show. <laughs> the blog. Uh, so uh, I, I know uh, Harry Carey is here uh, I, uh, from the dead. He wants to ask you a few questions. You used to hang out with him quite a bit. Oh, okay. Hi, bitch. What's How up, are you? Harry? What's up, buddy? Hey, remember that blood time? Blood pressure. Yeah, what's, your blood pressure. That's a good one. I got to remember that for tomorrow's broadcast. <laughs> Hey, uh, I'll tell you. You gotta. I, I hear. I, I hear a lot of pussies are taking over the game now. Uh, uh, you ever have a gluten? You ever have a gluten-free hot dog when I was around? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. No. Yeah. Harry was one of the best people I was ever around. He knew. I'm how right here. Everything. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you what. I wouldn't let Dutch here out some of these Dominican players. They have no honor. <laughs> no honor at all. Well, you know what? Your wife is, you know, wearing a sombrero. Well, if, if I'm talking, if I'm talking directly to Harry, yeah. I, I would tell you, Harry, my name is Mitch Williams, not Mitch Wilkerson, not Mike Williams. <laughs> Did he always get it wrong? Hey, I, guess who's I here? I felt so, I felt so bad for Harry. Mitchy Mantle. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, Jim this Sandberg, Ryan Sanderson, and uh, or Ryan Sandberg and Scott Sanderson were all on the same team <laughs> because those guys never had the same name two days in a row. Yeah, absolutely. I'll Jim tell you, Sanderson. That guy Sanderson, that Sandberg kid, gets all insulted because I asked him to do my taxes after the, so, you know, just a little joke. <laughs> Back in the day, Sandberg taxes. We all listen, Mitch. Remember, we used to have a blast on the back of the bus talking about some of the some of the interracial relationships. <laughs> Let me tell you something. People that know Harry know you're lying right now. Of that, course. That walk to the back of the bus was far too long for Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck am I, Rosa Parks? <laughs> for Christ's sake. I'm going to make a sound and say, hey, the fuck, I'm going to stand in the front of the bus. This is bullshit. I'm in the back. You got fucking Lee Smith in the front row. Lee Smith. I'll tell you, I don't, I don't mind changes. This is ridiculous. People say, Harry, wasn't it, weren't you happy to see Jackie Robinson run out 
to the infield for the Brooklyn Dodgers? I'm like, sure. I just want to see him running out of my house at four in the morning. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Jackie, you can't fuck with Jackie. Everybody's Robinson. got the freaking long hair from the back. Uh, this Williams kid, he looked like Ava Gardner. <laughs> John Crook. Look, look, John- I've seen your hair do too, buddy. <laughs> John Crook from the back. I'm like, what the fuck? Did, did Veronica Lake get stung by bees? <laughs> that was a fucking chubby guy. I used yeah, to get my he, hair cut. He couldn't hit when he was in shape. Like, absolutely not. Now, be honest with me. Come clean. I was always working. You never saw a Dutchie making out with a Dominican player, did you? No, I can honestly say that never happened. Bullshit! <laughs> <laughs> now, Mark Grace used to live with Dan Filato. Uh, and, of course, Dan's one of your favorite people. And, uh, according to Dan, Mark got more ass than a toilet seat. In a, yeah, in a, I, in a porta potty. At Bonnaroo. I, 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 Bonnaroo. Can't, I can't. Dan would know more about that, I guess, since he was living with him. But I, I was I, just I was, wondering. I, there's a rumor. I, was one of the asses he got Dan Filato? Oh, You'd have to speak with Dan about that. I have no idea. Can you see like it? Like I said, I, I couldn't pick him out of a line. I could probably <laughs> pick him out of a lineup. <laughs> well, you're going to have to. three of them were women. I think you're going to have to after you light your house on fire. <laughs> Dan Filato. <laughs> Now, Mitch, we, uh, well, I, I'll sign off, Mitch. Thanks for talking to me from the dead. Uh, when you get to heaven, you'll see me. I'll be the guy in the horn rim glasses and the bedazzled cub thong. <laughs> yeah. All right, buddy. Great to talk with you, Artie. Uh, no, no, that's Terry. I'm here still. Oh, well. We had to wrap up the interview in a proper professional what? way. I thought that it was just a matter of time. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, 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 you're saying Royals Mets. <laughs> The way it looks right now, I would uh, wager, yes, that will be the World Series. You know, comedian uh, Joe Matarese was at your roast with Lenny Dykstra, and he claimed that you and Lenny really almost came to uh, blows in a real, real fight. No. Did you almost fight Lenny? I mean, really? No, there would have to be some modicum of caring on my part to fight him. <laughs> oh. Oh, no, so there is some hostility there. No, I just couldn't. I completely couldn't care less. Well, you named uh, you named the uh, we'll end with this. You named the Asian kid uh, Bob, which I'm sure he's still in counseling about. Uh, now we have my my Chris Cotton is my uh, uh, co-host here. He's a 300 pound African American, uh, uh-huh. very dark skinned with a lisp. What would you What would your nickname for him be? Hello, sir. <laughs> Hello, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, from where I'm sitting, it's more like Big Sir. Oh, my God. Big Sir, no, sir. I'll tell you, Mitch, there's not many major league players who can conduct this interview like you did with a sense of humor. Yeah. A good sense of humor. This is our. This is your version of This Week in Baseball. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to send you over a picture of Dan Filato and uh, Gavin McLeod when he hosted the Love Boat. Perfect. Yeah. Text, well, text me that picture of Dan so I can text back a giant question mark. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll take well I'll text it right back. I got your text by the way. It's a picture of Seal and Heidi Klum with a WTF. <laughs> it's weird. Why would well, he do that? That would probably mean more to me if I knew who the hell that was. Oh come on! <laughs> Get with it! All right, you know what, Mitch? I'm going to let you go, and uh, after this interview, I'm sure they'll be looking for another career. Uh, do you know how to drive a stick? Yeah, yes, I'm uh, very educated in the manual transmission. He's a One man. word, Uber. <laughs> Uber. Uber. He doesn't know about Uber. Uber car, you know, you know Uber? Like, you, 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 Jesus, how out of touch are you? Buddy, I tell you, I don't watch TV unless... This is, this is American culture. He this lives is... on a ranch. He's an old school man's man. How much money you got? What are you worth, man? Here you we go. a nice uh, ch- <laughs> chunk uh, of change, man. I'm worth $4, depending on who you talk to. Oh, so she won the suit. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, I'm going to let you go. I know you got a perm and a petty, Manny Petty to get to. And yes, some, I do. You got a fro-yo with your name on it, but I'll tell you this. You're my favorite guest. I love you to death, brother. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate you having me on, Artie. I love you, too. And Take as far- care, Bob. Take care, Bob.
I'll tell you what, I'll say this, you know, the Bob Asian thing. I may not agree with a damn thing he says, but I'll defend to the death his right to say it. <laughs> We're taking a break and see if this was recorded. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Nothing is impossible. Uh, we're back for the show. Hey, buddy. Uh, yeah, so um, Mitch Williams, you know, I don't know. I think he seemed uptight. <laughs> I thought he was really going with it. Nah, yeah, I'm kidding. I'm busting his balls. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. I wonder if these guys uh, are afraid they're going to lose their job. But, I mean, no one's going to hear this. It doesn't matter. I mean, they might really not hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Second part, too. Uh, but, you know, so the baseball is... Seems a little anticlimactic uh, compared to the fact we might be going to war with Russia. You were talking about that. I didn't even follow that. I'm terrible. I, I mean, yeah, I know. <laughs> I am. I just don't. I, I just don't. What do you follow? I mean, the Chargers. I'm sorry. Yeah, the Chargers. No, I, I think I know enough about current events, but obviously not. I don't. I don't know. Well, you know, we might go to war with Russia. That seems okay. What's a current event? <laughs> <laughs> Like, would you have known about World War II? Like, would you have known about I Pearl like to, Harbor? I, I like to think I would have known about that. <laughs> I like to. I'm not going to promise you anything. Now, what happened to that boat? No. <laughs> Do you know? Like, Chris didn't know what Chuck Schumer was. No, and, uh, it's like, he's a senator for the Democratic senator. Uh, but, I mean, these are just people you see on television if you watch, you know. Well, I'm infamously horrible with names. Mm-hmm. I'm good with faces. I'm, I'm bad with names. But a top if, I, man. if I showed you his face, you think you'd know? Maybe. If, if, if I seen him before, yeah. I wouldn't know Chuck Schumer by but, his face. No, 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 Does I, he I look like Amy? Uh, no. <laughs> I can wholeheartedly tell you I try my best to avoid politics. Like, not even that I don't want to read it. I read it, but then I stop because I get angry and I get fucking... Did you ever fucking... try to write a political joke? You think you could write a political... I used to write, I used to write very political feeling you jokes you know, when I first started. Yeah. Because I used to watch a lot of news and I used to write everything based on the news. Well, yeah, but that's what comedians do. Yeah, That's but... the definition of a comedian. <laughs> they do? They, yeah, they, do? Yeah. Yeah. they don't just talk about, you know, yeah. Like... I mean, they were all short-lived jokes, though. You only got a shelf life. Yeah, but that's the fucking... point. That's yeah. That makes you good. Yeah, you just use it. I mean, now if I do it, I open up, usually if I open up a set, if I'm doing more than 10, 15 minutes, I open up for the first five, 10 minutes talking about whatever the fuck's the hot topic of what I want to talk about, which is usually pop culture shit. Like what? Uh, yeah, like I would talk. I like talk. Uh, so today, what would you talk about? Today was hot in pop culture. <laughs> Nothing that I would even want to talk about. I would just usually kind of cover like f probably violence and shit like that. Cop violence. And shit Can like you that. give us a report on the BET awards from Saturday? <laughs> Fuck no! I didn't watch it. The sad part about it is, I'm supposed to. I guess as a black dude, I hate BET and their awards. It's not good. It's never good. They don't do anything. What, I don't like award shows in general. Though. What about cop violence? Would you like just in general? It depends. Like to be honest, I'm on a thing where now I'm. I'm when I do talk about it, I'm like, look, if we if we want to go in detail, like I'm I'm tired of seeing the fucking videotapes. I'm tired of everybody fucking. It's a tape on every ten minutes, and it is the same. It's a shitty cop doing something bad, or it's a shitty person baiting a cop that's already kind of on edge, and and nobody come to the fact that you're making a traffic stop to some person you don't know what the fuck they have in their car, and everybody's terrified. Right. That's all it is. It's a lot of fucking fear mongering. So that's a comedy bit, yo. <laughs> no, I'm just. <laughs> it depends on if I, it, does, it depends. I would I would go on a rant about that. Uh -huh. I would find a way to get laughs out of it. <laughs> I, got, I got ten to do with my crazy rage. What about Lamar Odom and stuff? Like I would, that? I would probably talk about Lamar. I would end up talking about him and this succubus bitches that's around uh, him. That's succubus. a fertile. That's, <laughs> that's a fertile thing. Ugh. It's very. It's a, you know, people think it's a joke. It's a, they're it's a very dangerous situation. Those Kardashians. They, they really do ruin people's lives. Like that guy. Uh, that guy, Chris Humphreys. You know, I mean, he thinks he's going to marry this broad, and she's fucking, uh, she's with the producers of a show uh, making him look bad on their wedding day, and she made $2 million, and then they just, you know. A lot, a lot of people said that might have been political on both their parts, because that was with the NBA lockout, you know, looming, so he's like, well, I'll get married, and me and her will split the wedding gifts and stuff, and he'll make a little money. That's he I heard was, that, and I believe that. He was married to the bitch. He was that's in political. And, he was, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> He, no, was, no. he was married to the bitch, and the bitch started fucking with a rapper named French Montana, and she was fucking. Was he him. French or from Montana? He's a, he's Arabian. They just make it up. <laughs> he really is. He's Can't Arabian. Any of these black. But but he was fuck. She was fucking him. And then the yeah, shit that dissolved, I guess, or whatever. We just don't know if she's fucking him or not. And the second he goes into a coma and he's back in the news, but she clearly ripped off. Side. She ripped off her fans. 
She lied to them. They're these dumb fucking cunts who watch that show. Fans and that's what you are is dumb. You're dumb cunts who watch that show. What are they doing? Big Why are you dumb cunts? Uh, but all our stupid cunts. But all the Kardashian fans that listen to the podcast, you're offended. Stupid <laughs> fucking cunts. <laughs> they, they, basically, they lied to you. They, they said, well, we're going to get married. You all fucking fell for it. Oh, I really think she, I really think she loves him. And, and then and then they just betrayed you. They, they clearly they it was, it was a scam. I think and, and fuck you know Bruce is sitting there waiting to be, get a fucking pussy. Believe it, fuck it. He's waiting to fucking become Caitlyn. Oh. he's not even into it. And she's a you know her and her mother are plotting. They make money. Uh, there's an outrage for a little while, and you go right back to watching it. The ratings get even bigger because you're dumb fucking cunts with a void in your life oh, well, that you need to fill. This is That's the- being filled by the Kardashian show. The- think about it. How fucking disgusting. This is the shit I keep up with. This thing that's funny is their ratings now have dropped because Caitlyn Jenner's show exposed how much of a piece of shit he is, and people dislike him now. It went from being a top rated what? show to it dipped out real hard. Because what do you mean, what a piece of shit he is? I believe you. I, what happened I was no idea. People watching the show and progressively seeing, oh, this dude isn't here for transgender people. He's just a dude who wants to become a bitch, and he's fucking crazy. And the transgender <laughs> he should write, he should community guy. Yeah, they fucking. Finally turned on him. It was like fuck him too, and then they started protesting his bitch ass because he's a fucking crazy fuck. Like, like, ah. No, but so what? What what, what ratings went down? It's like uh, bigger Caitlyn than Jenner, ever. Ka- Caitlyn, no, Caitlyn Jenner. I am Caitlyn. I am Kate. His. No, his, I'm not talking shit. about that. I'm talking about the, yeah. the fucking mothership. And the, and the, the, oh, the, card, the, <laughs> the mothership. The thing that made Ryan Seacrest fucking you know Mel Brooks's neighbor. They're still <laughs> that thing. That's still holding steady. That fucking thing. That's still holding steady because the, they got uh, different the, sisters. They, are they really them. neighbors? The reason Ryan Seacrest, uh, fucking yeah, yeah, is in the same neighborhood as Carl Reiner. Uh, that 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 show. You know, fucking Reiner looks out every disgusting. morning like, "Fuck you, get out yeah. of my neighborhood." I'm just saying. It's just you know. I mean, come on. Don't, don't you feel dumb? Yeah, dude, my favorite show was The Honeymooners. If I ever found out they were lying about the you know some big episodes. Christmas episode It was really A Christmas episode And he really wanted To hit her every episode I'm told and He never went through with it <laughs> He but really yeah. was Gonna send her to the moon The honeymooners Never lied to you so, You know The odd couple Never lied to you Mash Fucking Sergeant Bilko <laughs> Taxi Cheers They never fucking lied to you Night Jeff- Court Jefferson. Night Court <laughs> Jefferson's might have lied to you What? <laughs> <laughs> what about Night Court? I love Night oh, Court. Night Court, Night Court was fun. It was fun. That was awful. It was I never fun. watched it because it, it came on fun. when I was going to college, so I, I stopped watching yeah, TV during that. Night Court. Night Court. It was wasn't bad. Marky the Honeymooner. Marky Post. <laughs> Ugh. A sexy Marky Post. That, 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 the only thing that was good about that was getting fucked up and going to an Allman Brothers concert and instead of Whipping Post, yelling out Marky Post at the end of that song. Tell Marky Post. Tell her to Moose. Tired to any use. Oh Lord, I feel like I'm dead. That's what that's what that show was worth. I had a question. Was Market Night Court post. real? Was that real? Did people really did you really have Night Court in New York City at one point? Sure. Like in the middle of the night? Of course they did, yeah. This that was, was real shit. Time. Yeah, then the night court was a real thing. <laughs> yeah, well, then, you know, they they had such an overload, they might still have it. They had such an overload of people. Do they uh, still have it, Dan? You look like you would know this. You seem officious. I'm sure they do. Yeah, and I know in Chicago they, they have don't. such an overload of people they can't handle it. Middle of the night. Because that's where the reporters would go and sit there at the court. Yeah, and you know, see who came crazy in. Crazy shit happens. And that's why they had a show. Oh, that's great. You know, you never knew that. No, I didn't know it was real. I mean, well, yeah, you know, I, I used to up. watch the reruns and some of the newer. Like I seen like the later new episodes when I was young. I just loved this fucking show. I thought it was silly and fun. He's pretty funny. Dan Larroquette was great in that. Quite a comeback vehicle for him. Terrible, bro. Quite a comeback vehicle. Not even. I mean, time to a taxi. The hundred. The odd couple. Night court. Password episode. Hacky shit. (laughs) It's a great episode. You grow up like a night court, man. Jesus. I love night court. Uh, Not as much as sliders, but I love like what sliders? <laughs> sliders, fucking was 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 uh, the show about the people who slid through the portals 
And they slid The first time they went to one They they was trying to get back home You know it was that What are you thing. talking about You're thinking of Quantum Leap No Quantum <laughs> Leap was Sliders was the new Quantum it's, Leap it's, it was, <laughs> Sliders was uh, Quantum Portals? Leap What are you even talking meets, about uh, Transformers It's like or, a science fiction job? Yeah it was a science fiction show They would go into It was a scientist Who he found out a way To open up this portal yeah. Into time and he jumped in it, and him and his friends went, and they was then trying to find their way back home. So it was a lot of parallel universes. It was quantum leap. It was quantum with children. Leap. Yeah, it was, it was quantum leap meets heroes. Yeah, it was. It was fun. It was a good time until season three. Then yeah, the season three. Really that's when it. That's when it jumped the quantum shark. <laughs> I can't believe why that one got by me. Yeah, <laughs> I never heard of that one. Sliders. Uh, when you say sliders, I'm thinking like you know little burgers. <laughs> I love sliders. Little, little baby burgers. How many sliders do you think you could eat, Artie? If we were all sitting here having a slider. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> oh, you guys got to go, right? You got to go, right? Why? I was told you got to go. Come on. Just do the plugs. Come on. <laughs> I want to know how many sliders. Just do the plugs. <laughs> I will uh, just follow me on, with the same old. Always follow me on Twitter. Okay, Chris. At Cotton205. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, all that. We're out. Just, boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> The Artie Lang Uncensored Podcast. Anything is possible.